All right, so I'm going to be briefly talking about retention policies. This seems to be something that kind of trips new users up when they're dealing with InfluxDB, and this is going to be something that's valid for all three versions. But basically, a retention policy is the policy of how long your data will be stored based on what you tell it to store it in the bucket. So I'm within the UI because this is just making it a little bit easier to visualize this. But basically, when you go to the Create Bucket button, which you can do also within the CLI, you don't have to do it through the UI. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in for this. You can see that you give your bucket a name. And a bucket is just a database for all intents and purposes. Buckets tend to be uh, separated based on uh, machine ID or uh, company ID, some type of differentiator between your buckets. And in certain buckets, you might have many machines all sending their data in to one single bucket because they share the same uh, data structure. Or some companies, when they're using us, when they are servicing other companies, they will give each company a unique bucket so it's easier for uh, data separation. But basically, a bucket is just a database. You can have, from what I understand, depending on your... Um, it depends on which version you're using and whether you're on cloud or open source, but you can at least have, you know, 10 to hundreds to thousands of buckets. It just depends on your use case. But all buckets will, for the most part, have a retention policy. Now, I'm on the cloud version, so right now I can't do the never delete option because I need to upgrade my account to be able to do that. But I can see this. So I can delete anything older than, and then I have a few drop down options here. So for example, I could keep my data for a year, 90 days, 14 days, etc. I can even keep it for as little as an hour and I could put in a custom duration. So what will happen here is, let's say I put it for six hours. After six hours has passed, and this retention policy will look at things like timestamps, for example, it will go ahead and delete that data. So why would you want to delete data from a database? I, I'm sure that might be a thought process that a lot of people have when they see these options. The reasoning is that you get your um, you get your time series data that's very minute. You get your data that's every nanosecond, every second. But in a couple days from now, when you're no longer real-time monitoring, you don't really need it down to the second anymore. So what a lot of people do is they do what we call downsampling. When they say something like, go ahead and aggregate my data for the past day, but give me the average temperature for the hour. So instead of having, you know, a couple thousand metrics, you'll just end up with 24 metrics that on the hour is the rough average temperature for your device, for example. And what they'll do is they'll store that in a bucket that has a longer retention period. So maybe for that data, the data that you've downsampled, you go ahead and you store it for 90 days. And then after those 90 days, you, you, you do it even more. You downsample again, or maybe you download that uh, data and put it into a data lake or an analytics toolbox or just a CSV file or something like that. But either way, basically the reason that we have these retention policies is to allow people to manage their data space constraints, their data like, you know, cost if they're hosting this somewhere, you know, even if you're hosting this on the open source, by having a lower retention policy, for example, it would allow you to store more data if you are constrained by the device that you're running on. If your device, you know, you only have so much storage space. So the less storage that you're taking up, the better it is if you intend to do multiple buckets, for example. So that is how the retention policy works. This is also, uh, just really quick, the documentation that talks about it. But basically, a bucket retention period is the duration of time that it retains data. So basically, everything that I just said. Points in the bucket with a timestamp beyond that defined retention period are eligible for deletion. So basically, also do be aware that, for example, if you upload your data and your retention policy is, let's say, one day, but you're uploading data that's multiple days old, it will probably delete your data because technically it's not within the retention period, which is just one day back. Now, that being said, because of the way that InfluxDB runs, it's not instantaneous. It's not always instant that it recognizes that your data is too old. Uh, so it might sit there for a little bit, but eventually it will realize what's happening and it will delete it, to be clear. Because that is something that uh, one other thing that lots of people tend to ask is, you know, uh, they'll, they'll have a retention policy of something like seven days and they'll change it down to one day, but it doesn't happen instantly. It's going to take, 
depending on what you're running and the versioning and where you're running it, it could take anywhere between one hour to like a day or so. It just depends because it has to go through the update. It has to go through the data and recognize that now this doesn't meet the retention period. Now, one thing to note though, is you can't go the other way. You can't make a retention policy for one day, upload data, realize it's been deleted, do it for seven days, that's not going to work. Pretty much once the data is deleted, it's deleted. It's not really backed up. There's not really anything that you can do to get it back. So just make sure that when you set your retention period, you keep in mind that after that period, the data will be gone. And yes, if you're dealing with historical data, we would normally just suggest that you do something like never delete or at least do it back like a year or something like that. But yeah, that is how the retention policy works. Just a quick overview for those of you guys who are new to this kind of concept. I know deleting is not common in all database types.